Hi there. You are perched against a limb of a tree and sitting on another limb that I have put together, my friend, so you can enjoy just a few minutes with me out here in Kodiak, Alaska. <laughs> I'm Mel. I'm very excited to spend some time with you. I have a website and blog called Encourage Better. And on Instagram, you'll find me as Emski Knits. And the whole purpose of pretty much everything I do is to share things that I think are beautiful and good and worth hearing about. And I do that to share with you in the hopes of just brightening your day just for a few moments. I'm out hiking with my husband and our dog and it's a beautiful day. We are at a place where it's nice and flat. This is actually a golf course and this golf course is tucked in between the mountains that you can see around me and we've been up and in and came down and because it's flat and i don't have to worry about what can i see around me i've got clear vision i can confidently spend time chatting with you and not having to worry about anything not that i'm really worried but it's a beautiful day it's about 40 degrees in case you're wondering you can't see my breath i get a lot of questions about that and we've been looking into it, my family and I, and as far as we can tell, depending on the humidity, it depends on that variable as to whether or not you can see um, someone smoking their breath, as my kids called it as they were growing up. Now, I want to share a couple of things I've been knitting with you. And, well, I've been knitting. I want to share them with you. The first I'd like to share are these gloves. I did these a while ago. These are fabulous. I love them. Let me lean forward. This moss is so soft and it's so green and so bright and it just cheers everything up. And I'm always amazed at how it can be ice sheets everywhere on the ground here and yet bursting with color and oh my gosh, the texture, it's amazing. So these are my mitts I did in Kate Celine yarn for the blue and the green and the lighter green and the darker green uh, background. The, um, the mitts are a free pattern. You're going to hear the dogs in the background. The mitts are a free pattern from Kate Celine. She does them as wrist warmers. I simply put a hole. I, I worked up until this point, and then split and worked back and forth, back and forth. And that working of back and forth is what gave me this opening for my thumb. Fast knit, quick win as I call it. So it's a small activity that just gives so many rewards. It was just so fun to have um, these on and off the needles in no time. And if you want to hear more about my thoughts on how to get your knitting mojo kicked into overdrive, um, season two of the Encourage Better podcast, Knitting Adventures in Alaska, it's available anywhere you can find your pod, your um, podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, everywhere. You can check the blog and, and find it there. But the, um, the season two, episode two talks about small makes big wins. My hat, this hat is knit out of Brooklyn Tweed. I knit this two years ago for my husband. Was it two years ago? Maybe it's only been a year ago. Um, and he wore it all the time. It was, it was last year I think I gave it to him. And this year when the season started, he couldn't find it. I knit him another one. And that's a free pattern on the blog as well. It was super fast to knit him the second one. As soon as we knit the second one, the first one was found which is fun. Okay, what am I doing that I'm pulling over to share with you? I'm sharing with you a pair of socks. <laughs> it's actually a pair. So I started these years ago and the story that I have that goes along with them, I will put up on the blog. I journaled about it. These socks have been on my needles for years. The adventure started in Pennsylvania 
and I used two balls of yarn because someone told me I should knit two at a time put two socks on the needle at once and I get the idea of that because when you're done you have a pair of socks but if you've spent any time with me you realize that I have a tendency to get bored really quickly and so I used two different balls of yarn uh, two different colorways this dyer is no longer dying so you can't get this yarn and also I've been knitting these for years so even if she was still dying I doubt she would still have this yarn on hand but uh, this is yarn from yarn versus zombies <laughs> and I cast on a pair of socks with each thinking okay I'll do two at a time I won't be bored and I'll come back and I'll knit the second so these started toe up they're going to get an afterthought heel they've come quite a long way let me flip them over for you I was knitting them as we were I started right here you can see where the little stitch marker is not very much progress it's because it has really been hard to walk even without knitting it's been hard to navigate there are sheets of ice everywhere I don't know can you see that behind me yeah there's sheets of ice everywhere and I didn't wear my crampons I just have my hiking boots on so that was poor planning on my part so what happened with these socks I started at the toe I knit up I'm gonna come back and do an afterthought heel but as I was getting to the ribbing for the cuffs do you see what I did here I started thinking I am never as far as like at this moment my heart is saying you're never gonna knit these two socks again so they're never gonna be two of these and two of these to match. So you're gonna have to figure out a way, Mel, to make these socks friends and mates and pairs. So what I did is I split the yarn and I started making the cuffs and my friend, so that it ties this together and it doesn't look like it was just some crazy idea. I'm gonna come back for the afterthought heel and the afterthought heel for this sock will be this yarn, this, this. They're gonna be kind of Frankenstein, but that's okay. I just wanted them off the needles. It was time. Have you ever felt like that? You're working on a project and you're working on a project and it's not that you don't like it, you don't enjoy it. You just have been going through it so slowly and there comes a point where you're just like, meh, I just wanna get this done. Not like, oh, I want to get this done. It's just like, hey, you know what? It's time. It's time for these socks to be complete, to have their chance to be, uh, Sasha is running and having the best time. They're over there now. To have their moment on my feet, right? So I'm pretty excited to cast these off. I think by the time we make it back to the car and the drive home, I'll be done with the cuffs. And maybe tonight, or maybe not, I don't know. I'll keep you posted. Tonight I'll pick up for the afterthought heel. I do true afterthought heels. Um, I do a little gusset. You can see where there's this little bump out. You see how it goes boop. So right before that is where I'll put my needle in and pick up. And right after that will be where I put the second. I snip and then I just, I don't put any waste yarn. Well, sometimes I do actually, I shouldn't say that. For these I did not. So that's what I'm knitting. I'm very happy. This is this is on the go knitting. Um, I take this, it's super easy to take this with me hiking or romping or ice skating as we go. Uh, very simple. I've got several other projects that I'm working on that I'm very content with. I, um, I just enjoy it. Now, before we go, I wanna share with you, if you get the chance to listen to the podcast, the audio podcast, the season two, episode two that I referenced earlier. In it, I share a poem. And that poem is from a book called Alaska Young Fisherman's Almanac, uh, volume two. And this is that book. This book, even if you aren't a fisherman and you don't live in Alaska, this book is so interesting and it really is worth taking the time to go through. I don't know if your library would order it for you, but it's a collection of Alaskans thoughts and 
memoirs, their poems, their, um, their recipes. There's a rhubarb and lemon cookie recipe. And they're from different areas, Cordova and Seward, um, Dillingham, Sitka, Kodiak, smoked and cam salmon. The neat thing about this book is it gives you a perspective from the people who live here who are fishermen and who are fisher folk and how, um, how their lives are so not just interconnected, but their lives are the ocean. The lives are the fishing. Their lives are these moments with nature and the abundant resources that we have here in Alaska. And it's very interesting. Um, just the reflections on the rhubarb for the rhubarb and lemon um, cookies was really interesting to hear about. All right, my friend, my stuff is in here. It is starting to get darker. It's not that late. I think it's, it's not even five o'clock yet. I think it's closer to 4.30, but the sun sets here at five and we need to be back on the road by then. <laughs> it's a long dirt road out here or gravel road. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope that the time amongst the trees and outdoors with the mountains in the background, oh, they're glorious. The mountains behind you are equally amazing. The fresh air and the sounds, it might sound, if I'm quiet for a second and let you listen, it might actually sound like it is the wind blowing and it's not, it's rivers or streams. So listen. Can you hear that? I hope it comes through. Anyways, my friend, thank you for joining me in my part of the world. Definitely in the comments, let me know where your part of the world is. And if you're watching this on YouTube, like it, subscribe it, and you'll know the next time I go out on an adventure and take you with me. <laughs> Bye for now.